Hi, if you're new around here, I'm Sanjay C. In this video, you'll learn how to set up Ableton Live, load drum kits, instruments, and effects, and then export your song to share with the world. Discovering every little feature in Ableton is going to take a long time, but today I'm covering the basics to help you start creating music quickly. There's lots more to learn, so make sure you subscribe to my channel for more tips on making music and the latest music gadgets. After you've installed Ableton Live, open it and we'll take care of some basic setup. If your Ableton Live looks lighter in color than mine, you can change it. I'll show you how to do it in a sec. There are two things you need to set up before we get started. First, go to Preferences. And in the Audio tab, you want to select your input and output device. If you have an audio interface, you'll select that as your input and output device. Right now, I don't have my audio interface connected, but you can also just select your internal speakers and microphone. If you're looking for a good audio interface, check out my comparison of the Focusrite and Native Instrument interfaces here. Next, if you have a MIDI controller keyboard, like a Native Instruments keyboard, a Kai controller, or the Arturia Mini Lab Mark II, like I'm using today, you want to make sure that your keyboard can take advantage of controlling Ableton Live. Go to the Link MIDI tab and select your keyboard under one of the control surfaces over here and you may need to select it under input and output as well. This kind of differs for different keyboards. Now, a MIDI controller keyboard makes controlling virtual instruments and even the virtual mixer in Ableton a lot more intuitive. So if you're looking for a good $100 controller, check out my video here comparing six of the best out there. If you want to change the look of Ableton Live to something kind of like what I have, click the Look Feel tab and change the theme. I have Mid Dark selected right now but I also really like dark. Ooh. All right, basic setup is done. Let's make some music. When you first open Ableton Live, it opens in what's called Session View, which is Ableton's signature mode for looping clips. It's what makes Ableton Live really special. If you've worked with other DAWs, you're probably more familiar with Ableton's Arrangement View, which looks like this, set up in a timeline mode that you might be more familiar with. You can make music in both views, and you can switch between the two by pressing your Tab button on your keyboard or using the buttons up here. We're feeling adventurous today, so we're diving right into Session View. It's going to loop everything we record, which is really great for coming up with new ideas. You'll find lots of drum kits on the left browser. Click Drums and then select any kit from the list of drum kits. I'm going to select 808 Core Kit. You'll see that it's loaded the kit at the bottom of track number one. And you'll also notice that it's armed the track with this red button here. If you're using a MIDI keyboard, press a key and you'll hear drum sounds right away. If you don't have a keyboard, you can actually use your computer keyboard like a piano keyboard. Go to the Options menu and make sure that Computer MIDI Keyboard is checked. Now, change your tempo to 80 BPM. And hit the metronome button up here. This is going to give us something to keep time with. All right, time to record. In Ableton's Session View, ignore the big Record button at the top. Instead, we're going to use the small record button in the first clip slot of the drum track. Click that record button for a count in and start playing. Hit the stop button at the top or the space bar on your computer keyboard to stop. Turn the metronome off and let's play that beat. You'll hear that it just keeps looping, which is great, again, because those drums are just going to keep playing while we add other instruments and layer this into a beat or even a full song. Now, if you didn't get your beat perfect, don't worry. Double click the clip you just created, and you'll notice that the MIDI notes have been written in for all the drums you played. You can even see the list of the drum hits on the left side. Now, if you made a mistake, you can move notes here. You can even draw notes in. I'm going to draw in the hi-hats. I'm just double clicking the mouse. Now you notice that my timing on the drums that I played on the keyboard isn't quite perfect. You can quantize your drums, which means getting all the notes right on the mark of the metronome by selecting all. I do a Command A, 
right click this area and click on quantize. So now you notice that some of the notes shifted. Let's listen again. Whoa, everything's playing in time. Boom, you can actually create your whole beat by just drawing in the notes in a clip. Keep experimenting. You can always undo a mistake you've made by clicking Command Z or using the undo menu here. Now Ableton Live is just one part of your music studio. To learn more about the other components to set up a music studio, watch my video on Music Studio Essentials here. Everything you need to start making music on any budget. All right, let's record an instrument sound next. Click on sounds on the left side. These are instrument sounds included with Ableton Live. You can also use any other virtual instrument plugin you have installed by finding it in the plugins folder right here. For now, let's just choose a sound included with Ableton from the pad menu. I'm gonna select Anapad. This time I'm gonna drag it onto MIDI track two. Now I'm gonna play a few chords, but you can really play anything. Make sure track two is armed and we're gonna hit the record button on the first clip slot under that track. All right, if you make a mistake, you can delete that pad clip by just clicking it and pressing the delete button and start all over again. Or you can open this clip and adjust the notes here as well. You'll see the MIDI notes have been written in for what you played with your keyboard. Here's a quick tip. If you use the fold button, it'll just show you the notes that you played and I'll just get rid of all the other notes. This is really good for adjusting things if you need to do it just a little. You can also quantize this just like we did with the drums. But now you'll see that all the notes are perfectly aligned. Wow, two tracks in just a few minutes. You're doing great. Let's keep going. Let's create a new MIDI track with a piano sound. Press Command Shift T to create a new track, or you can right click anywhere here and click Insert MIDI Track. I'm gonna select the Grand Piano Sound, but there are tons of other virtual instrument plugins that sound amazing. I review lots of plugins on my channel, and if you'd like to watch my review on a few of them, click on the video here. For now, load the Ableton Grand Piano. All right, our track is armed. Let's record something. Awesome. Now you notice that our sounds are kind of all at the same volume and the piano is getting a little hidden in there. You can use the faders right here to adjust the volume of your individual tracks. Let's adjust some of them. Now the bottom bar in Ableton either shows you the clip that you recorded like we previously saw, or the device you used to record it like you see right now. You can switch between the two views by either double clipping the clip like I do here, or you can use shift tab. Now it sounds decent, but let's add a delay effect to make it sound even cooler. The audio effects are in the left browser as well. You'll find lots of effects to add to your sound. Now we're gonna choose delay. Double click it and you'll see it added right next to your piano device. Now you can change around the parameters here, but let's just see what it sounds like just with its default setting. That sounds pretty interesting, but I'm gonna change some of those notes that I played. Let's shorten this note. Get rid of that. Now you can adjust a lot more of these parameters down here. There's so much you can do with any of these devices and effects or sounds in Ableton Live. If you wanna experiment with more of the audio effects, try something like a chorus or a flanger, or heck, just throw anything on there and just go crazy. The last track we're going to record before we export our song is an external sound. Now you'll see a couple tracks right here labeled audio. Audio tracks are different because you can't play them on a keyboard like we did with the MIDI tracks. Instead, we record audio directly into them 
or load an audio file like a sample on top of them. Now I've got a microphone right here connected to my audio interface. You may have an electric piano connected or maybe an external synth. I'm gonna record my voice. Now in the middle of the audio track, you should see X, in and one. That shows which input of your audio interface that track is listening to. Make sure the track is armed and let's record. Da, 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 da. All right, so I've recorded that track. If we double click that clip, let's see what that looks like. Now you see it looks different. We don't have our MIDI notes because we actually recorded an audio file. Let's play it back. All right, it sounds okay, but I'm gonna add reverb because hey, adding reverb just makes everything sound better. Let's go to the audio effects again, and I'm gonna choose a reverb right here. All right, that'll do for now. Now, when you press play, you'll notice that all the tracks keep looping. This first row might be the first portion of your song. You can create more variations in the next row, or you can even copy and paste elements from the first row. Now, you can trigger any of these clips separately. Press the stop button here. That'll stop all our clips from playing, and let's play them one at a time. Let's start with our pad. The best part is that Ableton always keeps these things in time, which makes us really good for performance. Now, in our last step, we're gonna arrange this into a song and then export it. Let's record our performance from the session view into the arrangement view. This time, we're gonna use the big record button at the top. We're gonna stop all our clips and then start recording. We'll trigger different clips like I showed you just now. Press stop once you've played it through enough. Now watch this. Press the tab key on your keyboard to switch views to arrangement, and then press this little red play button here. Now we're controlling everything from arrangement view. Now typically once I record my session into the arrangement view, I usually just stay at the arrangement view until I finish the entire song. In the arrangement view, you'll see everything we recorded and you can even stretch things like the drums. You can keep them playing and you can add more of the pad. You can even say, I want the grand piano here, but I'm gonna add another copy and paste it over here. And you can start arranging your song. You can also, with each of these individual tracks now shown in rows rather than columns, you can still see your devices and effects and you can adjust things as much as you want. And from here, you're gonna be using the top transport buttons or play, stop, and record. If you wanna adjust volumes from this area, your fader button is now this little flip thing here. You can adjust it up and down. Pretty cool. Now, when you've got your song arranged out, you're ready to export it and share it with the world. Make sure first that you click somewhere off of one of the clips, then go to file and click export audio video. Click the export button at the bottom and choose a name for your song. Ableton will export all the sounds and the effects and everything right into an audio file. Now open that file from wherever you've saved it. Cool, we're on iTunes. Well, not quite, but you can share this file with your friends or upload it into SoundCloud or even Spotify if you're ready. Now you can always go back to your song, even after you've exported, to tweak everything from the drum beat to the effects to the MIDI. But don't forget, you've got a ton of ideas and beats and songs in you. Finish something, share it, and move on to something new. You'll keep learning the more you create. Here's a bonus tip. 
The box at the bottom left, let me open it because I have it closed. Press this triangle here if you don't see this box. This box will give you tips on anything you hover over. This is a great way to keep learning with these little tips in Ableton Live. Have fun and make the music you love. And hey, check out one of these videos next. See you guys later.